And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Do you like setting traps for your buddies? Just waiting for them to walk into them, flip up the car, BAM! Hit them in the face! Well if so, you might like Master Plan. It's from Level 99 Games and it comes in the mini game library, which has plenty of games to play with. It's 3 to 6 players, it's a light card game, it takes about eh, 15, 20, 25 minutes. And it's all about bluffing and it's a free space game where you're throwing cards face down and hoping that your buddies will uh, run into your traps and get completely messed up and screwed over. Anyway, let's check it out. I'll show you how it's played. At the beginning of Master Plan, you get to pick your character and the corresponding pawn that comes with it. And the different characters are Ms. Fire, Dr. Badman, Z-Mask, Plutonium Poacher, Mysterious M, and Monster Nash. In Master Plan, it's a free space game which you're trying to take your character that you picked and get all the way to the trophy card at the end of the race there. Every turn goes the same. First you move, then you add any number of cards that you want, and then you draw a card. Now, you have to do them in order, but you can skip any one of these. Now to give you some idea of what you're trying to do here, you should probably see what these, some of these cards do. So there's, there's cards that you're going to be throwing down, and they're either going to do good things or bad things. All the things that do good things are in green and all the ones that bad are in red. So in case, just to show you some of these, uh, a good thing here is a big red button which allows you to choose any face down card that's on the board and flip it in its place and activate all its effects. Uh, so you can actually see what's out there without having to actually step on it. Uh, bonus gift, draw three cards then give one from your hand to the player to your left and your right. So essentially you're drawing uh, one each card and then you get to pick which one you want. Uh, laser Blaster, you get to destroy any space within a long range, which essentially was the long width, the long length of the card. Uh, so anything that's within one long length from this, you could blow it up. So that's good if you know there's something bad there. Now let's look at some of the, let's see, okay, so we have a switch. Choose any face down card, pick it up, and replace it with a card from your hand. So again, you could swap a bad thing out for a good thing. And let's look at some of the bad ones. So now you see these are, now they're written in red because these are the bad ones. Uh, trap door. If you flip this one over and step on it, essentially, you destroy the space and you would fall back to start. Uh, teleporter. This player gets, uh, the player to your left gets to move your character. So, someone could move you into harm's way on purpose. Uh, it's a bomb. It, the, the space just destroys and everything within jumping distance also destroys. So these are some of the things that you could do, good or bad, and these are the cards that we're going to be throwing down face down here in just a moment. So when you start the game, each of these people that are in the game are placed about one long card width away from each other and again as we talked about move add and draw other ways that you can move in this game the first turn you can't move because there's nothing there so you would add as many cards as you wanted so if I was uh, let's see uh, this guy here essentially I could add a card maybe like this and maybe I add another one I don't know somewhere like this in free space now it's important to note that uh, when you do move, you can only move a, short, a width of a card away. So this width, the short length or the short width of the card, if it can overlap from card to card, I could jump from here. From here to here they overlap, so I could jump from there to there. So this person added uh, two cards, you can add as many or as little as you want, and then they ended up drawing a card. And now it's this player's turn, it's their first turn, so they, there's nowhere to move to. So maybe they play a card here, maybe they play another card like this. And uh, then they draw a card, and then it's the next player's turn, and maybe they draw, they put some cards like this. So the cards start to fill out the player space, and you can pretty much go anywhere. Again, the object is to get to the trophy way out here. So it's red turns again, and maybe he moves. So he can jump here, and when he does jump to something, he has to then uncover it and do what it says. And in this case, he threw this, and it's a springboard that says, move your villain again. So then he could move, again, in measuring, making sure that he could actually jump somewhere. Yep, this one's just a long jump, but he could get there. He could do this one, and it's a big red button, which allows him to place any, any, a, uh, any face down card and do its action. So maybe he picks this one. Oh, it's a springboard. Move your villain again. 
So he can keep doing these sort of things. Maybe he, this one's a little, oh, he can. He can jump here. Maybe he flips this one. And it's a switch. Choose any face down card, pick it up, and replace it with a card in your hand. So this is cool. They probably think that one of these cards uh, is possibly good for these people to go there. So maybe they swap this one with this. And now it's this player's turn, and he moves. Uh, maybe he, he does move here. And when he does so, oh, it's a bomb. Everything explodes, including anything within a jumping distance. So all these cards would go away, and this person would go back to start, and all these cards are gone. And this sort of continues throughout the whole game, where people are essentially moving if they want, adding cards any number if they want, and then drawing one card. And this sort of happens all the way until either somebody gets all the way to the trophy and wins, or... After the whole entire deck has been exhausted, it gets shuffled, and then it's called Sudden Death. If anybody falls, as you just saw the person got exploded from the bomb, if that it happened again, this person would now be out of the game. So you can either win by getting to the trophy, or by being the last person standing by eliminating your opponents. So again, it's kind of a guessing game where you're throwing things out and bluffing uh, when it's your turn, where you might throw something good in front of someone, because they might think, hey, you threw something in front of me. I'm not going to jump there because it's bad. And then they put something here and, you know, people can start switching cards and then you lose track of who put what, what, where. And it's really a bluffing and deduction game trying to figure out what did people put where. <clears throat> and you're trying to go there. When it's your turn, if you do move, uh, let's say this person moved here to a place that, that say, yep, that he could jump there. If he moved here and it's face up, you get one free move. So they could move another spot. So if, if you're going to a in a, a uh, an open card, this is I think this is kind of a catch-up mechanic. So because if you had exploded and you went back to start, and you know you had a card face up, it could help you kind of get closer to the trophy. So essentially, you're you're draw you're moving, adding cards, drawing, and trying to eliminate your opponents. Guess what they put down for you? Try to lead traps for them, and trying to be just mischievous. Now once you've played the game once. You can actually start using the opposite sides of these cards, which all of them have special abilities, which makes it even more fun to choose your character. For example, Z-Man's special abilities, he can create a minion in your current space, and then that minion moves for you this turn and controls uh, any space it flips, and then remove it after your turn. So this is good if you're not sure if something's uh, good or bad there and you just want to test it out, you can kind of send a minion for him. Uh, the Plutonium Poetry says whenever you would draw cards, you can draw from the among face-up unoccupied spaces on the table. That's pretty cool. You can pretty much grab anything you want. Uh, Dr. Badman, draw a card after you place three or more cards in a single turn. So you could drop a bunch and then draw one. Monster Nash, if moving from a face-up space to a face-down space, you can choose not to flip the space you move to. You cannot claim the trophy from a face down space. This is cool. This allows him to actually maneuver around things that he probably knows or thinks is bad. Ms. Fire, uh, instead of moving, you can discard a card from your hand to activate its effect just as if you had flipped it from your current space. Again, another cool ability. And Mysterious M, at the end of your turn, look at one of the face down spaces anywhere on the table. So when you mix this uh, all this up with the, with the special abilities, it does make it for uh, an even more fun of a game. All right, well, there's Master Plan. So how does it fit in with the library? So that mini game library comes with a bunch of games, and they're all different, uh, you know, player ranges and different from light to hard. And this sort of fits that three to six light card game. And so, you know, when I played it with my testing groups. Everybody that I played it with seemed to like it. Um, the younger kids liked it even more than I did. Uh, you know, I played with some high school kids. I played with some middle school kids. Both the high school and middle school kids, they loved this game. Uh, for me personally, I mean, it's 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 not my cup of tea per se, but who? what do you care? I'm just one guy's opinion, right? Who would like this game? So younger kids like this game. Uh, the, the aspect of throwing those cards down and, and, and thinking, making them think that you're throwing something bad in front of them, or in fact, maybe you're throwing something good or vice versa, or just throwing them out in space and then, you know, remembering where they are, not to step on them, you know, really trying to bluff your friends out. Uh, it, it is a little light fun game. If you take it for what it is, if you're looking for a very light game that's kind of like, haha, take that, you stepped on my bomb, boom, you blue exploded. Uh, you know, the kids did like this. So it, I, I see where it fits in with the minigame library as they're trying to give you a well-rounded thing that you can take to anybody's house. And depending on how many players are there and how light or hard deep of a game you want, you'll have something in that library. So I see that this fits that pretty well in here. Uh, the special powers I loved. Uh, without those, it would have been pretty bland. 
Uh, but adding those special powers really, you know, the people get, the kids got excited when they got to pick their character because not only was each of them like a specific color that they liked and a cool looking, you know, artwork was good. But then once they saw which specific power they had after we played a few times, like, oh, let me test this one out. Ha ha, I can look at your card face down before I move. Ha ha. So that did add a, a, a lot into it. Um, it was quick. It was light. Uh, it was enjoyable. And again, I think the younger generation will, will like this better than, say, people my age playing against each other. So if you're playing it with a family, this is a good family game, a light game. Anybody can get into it. And it's fun just to see what happens. And sometimes you forget you threw a bomb down. You step out on yourself and everybody laughs at you. So for what it is, it's a good light game for the family. So much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>